Hey there, pubsters. Welcome back to another episode of the Apple Pub. My name is Raphael, and... So as you can see, Eman couldn't make it here today, so instead, I decided to bring in his twin brother, Mr. Broom. Their likeness is very uncanny. So moving on, we have a lot to cover today, and let's just jump right into it. So a few weeks ago, we had talked to you guys about Intel's leaks on their new Skylake processor. So this week, we actually got a bit more information on what those processors will, their technical specs. And we also found out that it's what's likely to be appearing in the new updated MacBook Airs. Now, some people have been talking about whether or not the chips will be ready in time for the, the, the updates, but it seems that since they've actually released finalized specs, it's more than likely going to be appearing at Intel's um, new developer forum next week. Now, this is only for the lower end CPUs. The ones that would be going into the MacBook Pro are more than likely not going to be coming out until 2016, which has led to some people speculating that it might not even be ready in time for the MacBook Pro updates. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see, but it seems like the Skylake chips will be ready in time for a MacBook Air update. There's been a lot of back and forth about Apple designing an Apple car in recent months. We first heard that they were in talks with BMW, but then that fell through, uh, that they're working on a self-driving car, that they might get back into talks with BMW. So it's kind of up and down, but it's no secret that designers for Apple, both Mark Newson and John Ives, are very big car enthusiasts. Recently, Newsom actually mentioning that one of his biggest design pet peeves is the automotive industry. So there is some interest there for Apple, or at least their designers. There's even rumors this week that they've been looking for locations in the Bay Area to test out the self-driving car. Now, this does add a lot of credibility to the Project Titan rumors, but seeing as the car won't even be released until 2020, there's a lot that can change from here until then. I mean, the whole project might even be scrapped. So we don't really know what's going to be happening, but it does seem that an Apple car is something that's in the works. There were also a few smaller stories that occurred this week, including the fact that Apple released larger bands and bracelets for their Apple Watch, for people, those of you with larger wrists, as well as making the modern buckle a standalone purchasable item now. Apple also updated Bootcamp to bring Windows 10 compatibility to the Mac, which is great news for Broomstick Eman here because he's been wanting to try out Windows 10 on his iMac. And if you've purchased an Apple TV in recent weeks, you should really check your email to see if you've received any no notification from Apple about a recall. It seems the recent batch of third generation Apple TVs have had some sort of manufacturing defects, so do keep an eye out if you've purchased one recently for that email. Um, also, do remember that the fourth generation Apple TV will more than likely come out this September, so you may want to hold off and get that one instead. And of course, if you're interested in reading more about these stories, do check out the links in the description down below. So moving on to the Bengate update that happened this week. Unbox Therapy apparently got their hands on the actual 6S backplate and were able to compare it to the current iPhone 6 backplate, showing us that the newer one is actually slightly larger as well as being thicker in key points, which reinforce that area around the volume buttons that would usually cause that bending to occur. Now, it was also tested and found to be lighter than the current model uh, back plates, which again points to the fact that they are more than likely using that 7000 series aluminum material. Now, of course, if any of you have actually been keeping up with our videos, we did mention that this update was happening about a month ago when nowhere else.fr had leaked those photos that showed the reinforcements within the, uh, the back plate. It just seems now we have actual video hands on proof that you can see right here on YouTube. And we will obviously link you guys to the video. So if you do want to check out that video from Unbox Therapy, check the description below. We were even treated to another side-by-side -side comparison of iPhone 6S leaked parts when the display unit of the new 6S somehow found its way into the hands of the guys over at Mac Maniac. And of course, we'll link you guys to that video down below as well. And finally, we have some updates for you guys, or I should say I have some updates for you guys, uh, about the upcoming Apple event this September. So the first update has to do with the iPhone 6C. We did mention last week that it's likely that the 6C won't be launched uh, this fall alongside the 6S and 6S Plus because it might cannibalize sales. Uh, but it seems that Mark Blass, a uh, known mobile leaker, is stating that it will happen uh, this fall, whereas we have other logs that have been found, marketing logs that have been found that only point to two phones being dropped this fall. So I'm kind of going to go with what we had originally stated last week that 
the 6C won't be showing up until sometime next year, uh, which Apple hasn't ever done before, but it's more likely than it dropping alongside with the 6S and 6S Plus. So some great news for you iPad users out there. It does seem that code has been found within the El Capitan beta that points to the new Mini 4 uh, being compatible with using multi screen multitasking, which also points to the fact that the new Mini 4 will more than likely be a shrunken down version of the iPad Air 2. There was also an update that the iPad Air 3 won't be launching in the near future, but this was leaked from DigiTime, so please take this with more than just a grain of salt. They also stated that the Pro will probably not be happening, but it's more than likely both the Mini, the Air, and the Pro will all be launching within this fall because they really need to compete to gain back their market share within the tablet market. Uh, the Surface Pro 4 is coming out, so they really do need to bring something on the Pro level to match that. So it's more than likely all three will be dropping in the fall, or at least I believe so. Uh, so do keep an eye out for that. And finally, in some news that really pains me and I would more than likely believe would uh, bug Eman as well, it has been confirmed that the Apple TV live streaming service will not be happening this fall as negotiations have again stalled. So sadly, even though we're likely to be getting the 4th gen Apple TV, we won't be getting that TV uh, streaming service that at least I was hoping for. Well guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's show. I know it was a bit missing something because, you know, Eman's not here. Uh, he's actually out of town, but please help support the channel by subscribing, like the video as always, and of course, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment box below. And as always, take care and stay classy, popsters. See you again next time.